Morning. <clears throat> Half the morning's gone. It's always uh, it has gone. Twelve o'clock. A bit of uh, super. Well, IKEA. We've got an IKEA about a, two or three miles away from here, and we got there before it got too busy. Various bits and pieces. Quite an amazing place, really. You, you just follow the arrow because you get lost otherwise. Anyway, very interesting. Um, so what I'm going to do here is to, you know, I'm going to use the black ink or the black acrylic paint. This is what I'm using, the Galleria acrylic, Windsor and Use. It doesn't matter what, what variety it is, as long as it's, you like the colour and it's waterproof once it's dry. So I'm going to, I'm going to put in some trees here with uh, uh, this, this house, all these houses here. I'm going to put those in not too thickly. I, I, I want them to just be indicated a bit rough. And then a bit of a, bit of a roof there. Oh, that's good. Very and I might do a, a, a Roland Hilda trick here and, and black out the shadow side, but I might not. Well, that's basically it. So let's put in some some of the usual. Flora and fauna. I'll uh, use a smaller brush, a shorter brush. Uh, okay, that's a that's a better one. The other one was a number four acrylic rigger. So just 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 put a bit in here. And across there, there's a little figure in there. I'm going to put. Edward Wesson used to say the piece of white paper was the best painting he ever did before he went and ruined it by putting colour on it. But there we are. Alright, okay. Just a little bit over the, the back here. Right, I'll put in a little bit of detail in there. The washing in is not going to take very long. That's if I actually can actually finish this without screwing it up. Right. Really too much ink work. Famous last words, of course. I just want To make it easy for myself with the paintings, it got a bit darker there, and then a little bit stronger in here. Get the contrast with the uh, with harder, thicker paint. And I'm now showing the shape of the ground coming down the slope here. Very easy to overdo do this. A 
put a bit of a hedge foe in there. Well, not hedge foe, but just put it by the side. Ooh, dear. By the side of the the, the, the track. Just a few bits of a bit of bushes here. Okay, that'll that'll do for that side. Let's just fill that in there. Good reasonable shape. Right now we'll go over to to this. We'll get carried away. Remember your, your trunk's got to be strong enough or thick enough to support all the superstructure of leaves and twigs, branches. Okay. Um, we'll put a bit of ivy climbing up this. Balance the other side. I used to love, well, I still do love Roland Tilda. It's probably my favourite watercolour painter. I love some of his subjects, not all of them. I, I don't really do a lot of architectural stuff. I had enough of that doing Venice for a year. For a year. Let's just get that shadow in there a little bit heavier. Right, oh, that'll do it. And as typical of um, some of these Norfolk type of houses, you have the, uh, the, the, the roof lines are different from side to side, steep, not so steep. And these little outhouses just coming out the back. Mm. All right, spaghetti. <clears throat> so we'll we'll call this for Norfolk because Maxine lives there and Smoothie has got antennae. Tuned into the word Norfolk, one of his favourite places. Just try to vary these, the just the, the um, directions. We don't want regiments of soldiers. <coughs> right, let's just get in a bit of a 
bit of a shape on the top of this canopy here. Winter trees, which are my favourite. And I can put some, some painted ones behind here. Okay, let me do it. Alright, let's get another bit of a plane going on there. some pushes. Okay. But then we've got to link this and I'm going to put it up some hills in the in the background but nothing very strong um, I, I put some heavier background in there now I've got to try to leave remember to leave some of this light because I don't like it. The figures won't show up. Walking down the track here. Yeah. Oh, just a little bit of bit of detail on that as it goes over the hill. That's blotted there. So I've got to change my approach to this bit here. Yeah, I see that's ruined it really. This is a danger when you're working with um, the finer, thinner papers. But they're not really rough enough to, to hit the high spots. That's why we get these blobs. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on this bit of gouache, bit of white gouache over some of that. And, I can do about that. So it's, it's typical in this sort of law. Okay, well, I reckon that, that's okay. That, that will do. Let's clean my brush. That's nice and clean. And change my little pot of water, I substitute it for a cleaner bit of water. I'm going to just dry this, so take your headphones off. I don't want to put in my, my well, I could really, I could, yeah, I could do that, couldn't I? Put a, put a couple of little men there, 
or men, men. So that's a a bit small. Make it a bit bigger. Okay. Let's uh Right, well he's uh, still probably just a little bit small, but not a lot. Uh, let's just get him a little bit bigger. over a bit there isn't he? Right that that will do that will do let's stop push our luck with that. Okay uh dry headphones off right Liberate the pallet from the Ziploc bag where it's been languishing since Saturday. Here we are, take it out and see what this looks like. Well, it's still nice and, and moist, which is lovely. Swig of tea. Right, now, first thing to do is to wet the paper all over. Well, a lovely weekend weather-wise. Okay, bit of a bit of a wall with some sienna, raw sienna that is. I'm using lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red. In fact, I'll put a bit of a lizard in there anyway. Why not? That's dried out a bit too much. Bit blue. Keep the bristles together. Right now we'll mix a bit of light red with that. As quick as that. I know some of you struggle with skies, but I'm not planning it, I'm just doing it. I'm just sort of holding my breath and just putting it in. So we'll just have a little bit of bit of cloud down here. And then just a, a very light bit of bit of cloud there. That will do. Um, there may be just a bit of the uh, raw sienna on the the bottom of the clouds there. Give a bit of uh, distance. OK, 
get your clouds going behind your buildings and your, and your trees. Otherwise it looks like you're filling in. And that won't do. Right. I'll do a bit of landscape now. I'm just going to lift out that. I just run my brush along. Take that cauliflower out there that's appearing. Just just gently lift that out. Right. Okay. So time of day. Well, going home. It's more of a morning, isn't it? Taking a dog for a walk. Uh, so let's put in some some nice lemon yellow, a bit of burnt sienna, and light. Well, let's just put it in. A bit of Payne's grey. Very many colours. Don't get stuck on just just one. Warm up as you're coming to the. Uh, to the foreground. And I'm trying to paint the way the, the landscape is, is going, like down. But paint's grey, bit of bit of shadow in there. Okay, so over here we've got a bit more shadowy sort of colour in here behind those trees. Now uh, just a bit of sienna with with some yellow there. I'm I seem to have something against using burnt up. I don't know why, it's just I'm not in the habit of it. Oh, I've got some dark darks in here. Showing the verges. Right, just kind of a bit of shadowy colour there. Let's see if I can lose some of that edge from the black and the and the grass. Right, okay, that's probably not the best sort of colour there. So let's go in with some burnt sienna and Payne's grey. Just a little bit, just just a little. Put it in the background now. So a bit of alizarin, a bit of blue, a bit of yellow. Don't want a lot, just. Then I can superimpose some trees over that. The black will, black figure will show up. Right um, now, one of my dodges is using a bit of alizarin and a bit of, bit of ultramarine. And put it behind. It needs to be darker than the sky. That's all I can say about it. And it's there, it looks like Trees behind. Gives that, a, hopefully, a, because it's called against warm colours, gives it a, the, the impression that there's some 
trees behind though, this is the foliage. Let's show you through there. Okay, so that's now I can go a little bit heavier on, on that. On that, I'll put a bit of a bit of burnt sienna in there. Bit of burnt sienna on the tops of these. Could strengthen that up a little bit. Same over here. Okay, now when that dries I can put some, some blue trunks up there so that will contrast with these foreground trees. But if I put a bit of lemon yellow and a bit of burnt sienna, even a bit of light red, I see that just just in there, warm that bit of wood up there. Mm, don't know why I did that. Right, well that's the trouble with painting, isn't it? Let's, uh, you do things you don't mean, because you don't think about them. Oh, I didn't, certainly didn't think about that. I'll do some of that with the rigger. Now I want a, a, a path, Slightly red. And then when that dries, um, well, I'll give it a dry, so I'll take your headphones off. Put in some warm, warm foliage behind there. So I use Payne's grey and a bit of burnt sienna. I'll put a little bit of blue and just let's get that in there. Hopefully, this will link the two sides together. Okay. Now, some rigor. I just we get the paper. So you never know quite how your skies are going to turn out. It's a bit too streaky, but by the time I've got the mount on, and a few birds in there, it won't look too bad. I hope. So let's uh, mix some nice green, lemon yellow, burnt sienna, Payne's grey. And we'll just, just come over this and just texture in some grasses. Not too much in here. Could have painted those houses, yeah. I, that's probably why I use my burnt umber. Because burnt umber, when it's thin, it's quite pinky. Do something for those ones. I was going to. Right.
All right. <coughs> Let's get another man in further down there. Now, the, the eye line is here, so you keep your heads the same height. This, and your feet higher, higher up. So the perspective goes up. Right, okay, let's put in a bit of shadow. Uh, light there. Light coming there. You've got to sort out your light, but it's coming from all directions with this one. So I'll, I'll just put it. Doggy. And then we'll uh, put in some shadow, a bit burnt umber, blue. To these houses now. Uh, I've got this number six here, I'll use this, the burnt umber, on these houses here, still on the shadow side. I don't want to And then we'll put a dark bit of in there. Mm. Now, red roof, red north roof, whoops, burnt sienna. Shadow in on that roof there to leave the top showing as uh, catching the light, bit of light. Uh, right, okay, can't do much more to it than that. I don't think. I'll give it a signature, I'll put it in a, in a mount. Birds. to put in some some blue look see that that just looks distant now put some in here Okay, so we've we've established some sort of depth in there. Um, let's uh, have a look at it in the. Uh, in, I quite like the idea. Now. Although there's a lot of blue in it, we'll, we'll have a look. I'm 
just the clip there and the other side. So walk in the dog. Uh, let's just bring the thing around here a little bit. Um, that's more or less square. Right, let's zoom in. Oops, sorry. All right, so there's my, my collection of buildings. Very simple, very simply stated. Just trying to get a silhouette, a nice shape, really. But they could have been better. There you go. Right, so the a red roof with pan tiles, which would be typical of Norfolk. And my trees over there. So you can see the blue trunks behind. Gives that illusion of depth. There's something going on behind. It goes from a flat black and sienna, but sienna plane to another plane behind. It just gives it that that stretching back into the landscape. And I've kept the nice warm colours in the foreground here. We would have been, I was going to do something with this, but I can't be bothered. I think it's okay. It's right for what it is. Now we've got the strong shadows coming across there. And you can see the perspective here. The, the heads are the same height, but the feet go up because they're on your eye line. That's your eye, that's your horizon across here. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Your horizon is your vanishing point and, and things are coming up. But on the horizon line, everything on that plane is at the same height, give or take a few inches according to people's different heights. But it's the feet that go up. If you look at a, at a street scene, all the heads, all the feet, depends on whether you're up on a chair or something, the, everything goes up to the eye line, or down to the eye line. But people walking away from each other, the heads will be the same, but the feet will go up. And that's the way you create perspective, aerial pers or linear perspective in a painting or drawing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll just zoom you out again and we'll have a little look at it and I'll go and upload it. I've kept my my point of interest here. It could have been a bit further over, but but that leads into there and you look around the picture and you've got these other bits and pieces to enjoy. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.